Do you feel like your double bass drumming skills are not progressing as fast as you want to? If that's the case, then this video is for you. We discuss the top mistakes beginner drummers make when it comes to double bass drumming and how to avoid them. First, pedal sentences. When I started to focus on double bass drumming, the cool new thing was to use the maximum string tension in combination with light bass drum details. And we all set up our pedals that way. But the problem with that is that if you are a newbie, then your feet aren't used to moving that fast and they are definitely not used to constantly push against the tight spring tension at higher tempos. So a hint, all of us beginner drummers that try to follow these extreme pedal settings recommendations fail. So here's what I would do instead today. I would start with the out of the box pedal settings, wouldn't change a thing. The reason is that companies set up their pedals in a specific way before they ship them to you. It's their goal to give the buyer, the drummer, you in this case, a good result with those right out of the box settings. They're not stupid, you know? But in case that you've already messed with your settings a bit and don't remember those out of the box pedal settings, then here are some guidelines for you. First, set the bass drum beta to a 45 degree angle and use the lowest spring tension possible. Then start to play for a long period of time non-stop. I'm talking about at least 10 minutes of non-stop slow double bass. At one point you will feel that your feet start to move quicker than your pedal board is moving up and down. So at that point you lose touch with the footboard and that's when you can increase the spring tension a bit and repeat the same exercise again. Actually repeat this until you get a comfortable balance between the up and down motion of the legs and the returning football. The next big mistake we all seem to make in the beginning is combining both feet too early. So here's what I did in the past and I hope you won't make this mistake too. All I did was practicing with my right foot at a specific tempo. And once I felt okay with my right foot, I would immediately add in my left to play double bass. And as soon as I did that, numerous problems occurred at once. First, I had balance issues. I either had to lean forward or back to keep going. My left foot couldn't play tight. And suddenly even my right foot didn't seem to work that well anymore and so on. So the problem here was that while I was playing with my right foot, my left foot placed relaxed on the other pedal served as a human kickstand. So that left foot was my main balance point. And as soon as I removed that balance point, I had to compensate by leaning forward, back, to the side. Also, since I didn't practice enough with my left foot independently, my left was way less developed than my right. So that foot wasn't even able to move that quickly most of the time. And of course, if that's your current skill level, your left foot is way underdeveloped and then you try to combine both feet, then you're destined to fail. So now here's how to solve this. It's actually quite easy. Remember the original practice routine I described earlier? Just practicing with the right foot and then switching to double bass. All you have to do is add in a third component, which is practicing with your left foot by itself as well. So this improved practice routine would look like this. First, playing with my right foot for at least two bars. Then repeating the same thing with my left foot. And then finally, only then I would combine both feet play double bass. And now on to the third big mistake I made when first starting out practicing double bass. It was trying to learn different techniques at the same time. You know, actually double bass drumming is not that difficult at all. You just need to learn how to use specific muscle groups, then you train them on and off the pedals, and then you store the right motion patterns to your must memory to play with your feet. But what I did in the beginning was I overwhelmed myself by practicing different techniques at the same time. So I would play heel up for a couple of minutes. Once I failed at that, I just switched to heel down playing. Then I would stop really soon because of the burning sensation you get in your shin muscle when using this technique. And then on top of that, I'll end up working a bit on the heel toe technique as well. Big mistake. The big issue here is that if you practice this way, you restore specific motion patterns to your muscle memory and it takes a long time to get rid of those habits you stored by trying to learn different techniques at the same time. And I see this with my own students at the Drum Team Academy as well. Those that spend way too much time just working on the heel down technique for example, 
they tend to incorporate their shin muscle when playing double bass and get fatigued really quickly. All of them struggle with endurance and speed at one point. And those that have been focusing just on the heel toe technique tend to drop their heels on the first hit and they can't play continuous strokes because their heel is on the floor already. Those students have a hard time starting and stopping with the ankle technique, for example. So here's what to do instead. First, get a feel for the different muscle groups you're using when playing double bass. Cool thing is we can work on this by practicing without pedals at first. So first start with a full leg motion and keep your foot in place like this. This way you will only use your hip flexor to lift the weight of your legs off the ground. Next, place your feet on the floor and only start lifting your heels. This will help you develop a feel for your calves while you relax the muscle groups in your upper leg as much as possible. And finally, only for a short amount of time, also practice heels down. This way you'll find out about the burning sensation in your shin muscle right away. The shin muscle is such a weak muscle group, so we don't want to rely on it too much, especially if your goal is to play double bass at higher tempos for longer periods of time. Now, if you want a double bass workout that's effective and works at every tempo, then click right here. This is my go-to workout to improve endurance, speed, and control.